I think that the people, if they cannot be assured that there's going to be a bipartisan redistricting uh, process, that they deserve to see what a bipartisan or nonpartisan map would look like. And then they can see the differences. So I am, I'm, I'm pleased that we are going into the direction where people can continue to get educated about what happens in gerrymandering. Why do we end up with such polarization? Well, because we don't have competitive districts. I'm in a competitive district, and I think that makes me a very good legislator because I've got Democrats and Republicans and independents and people who don't vote. Got a great mix. But when you have gerrymandering, you have solid Dem and solid Republican seats where they know they're going to get elected over and over again, and they can be as extreme as they want. That doesn't help us get things done. It's constitutionally the legislature's responsibility to draw the maps, and that's what we'll do. I, I would love to see what this is going to cost the people of the state to have a parallel process that isn't even const in the Constitution as far as how to, how to draw the maps. Uh, the idea that redistricting somehow is this massive gerrymandering issue that really puts Democrats at a competitive disadvantage, I think is, is just quite frankly nonsense. In the state before the maps were drawn, the new maps were drawn, we had 60 seats in the assemblies as, as Republicans. We now have 63. Hasn't been a major shift. We've also had, we also have Republicans sitting in Democratic, uh, Democrat majority seats where top of the ticket they vote for Democrats at the top of the ticket, but they still vote for our Republican candidates. We've had long-held Republican seats that have switched over to Democrats. The, the map fluctuates, but really what it boils down to is wherever you draw the lines, it's demographics and geography that really make the difference.